Hey, what's happening guys? Mike Moo here. Welcome to my channel. This video is an update of my first impressions review video that I did back in September. Uh, this is going to be my third video about the front row camera and it is probably the only one that someone did an update on that did not get the product for free. And this is not a sponsored video in any way by any company whatsoever. With that said, please like and subscribe to this video if you want to see more videos like this where we go in more deep in detail review of many of the products that I own, use, or try. Okay, so let's go and get started. The reason why I created this video was because uh, I did a first impressions review and usually when someone reviews a product they've only used it for a number of days, maybe weeks at most, and you don't really get the follow-up in terms of whether or not going back would they purchase this camera again? Would they continue to use it? If they weren't sponsored by the company or other companies to use a product, would they use it in their own day-to-day -day lives? Well, I'm here to report to let you know that I actually did not end up keeping the front row camera. I used it for a good month, day-to-day -day on a trip, and I talked about that a little bit down in my first impressions, initial impressions uh, review video that you can go ahead and see um, also on my channel where I talk about some of the initial uh, usage and first impressions of using it in the interface and what it can do. Now, I got a question recently by a YouTube uh, comment uh, on my video asking me what I thought um, that uh, by Statue Fanatic. It says, Mike, I'm going to San Diego Comic Con this year. You've had a chance to work with this device for some time. Would, you, would this be your recommendation or have you come across a better option? Uh, thanks for liking and subscribing it. And uh, as you can see, I, I did, went ahead and, and talked about some of the features um, down here below on what I thought about it. And I think that this is probably the best camera of its kind right now today something a little bit more up to date. I have used other cameras in the past, other wearable cameras, and uh, one of the one that I referred to back in my first initial impressions was the autographer. Unfortunately, after so many years of using, years of using it, the battery has gone kaput, so I can't really use it that much more anyway, and it doesn't record any video. It's purely like a similar story mode to the front row. So the front row is the modern, up-to-date version of that type of camera. Autographer is no more. So uh, this is, of course, the best of its kind right now. Um, there was one that was just recently introduced, was the Google Clips. Uh, that one has a lot of okay reviews. Um, it is just being able to be ordered right now. So there's some first initial impressions reviews out there. Not all that great. It might improve, but it's, again, a first-gen product. Going back to the front row, uh, this is not gonna be better than your smartphone camera. So if you're thinking about using this and um, let's see, Statue Fanatic is going to be going to Comic-Con and he wants to potentially use his front row for B, uh, B shots or some other things where you don't have to put a camera. Uh, Close-ups of statues, uh, toys and figures so that, let's see, um, he, he's going to use his phone specifically for that, but he didn't want to walk around uh, with it up to, up to his face to capture supplemental B-roll footage. Well, I, I'm going to tell you right now that the B-roll footage you're going to get from this is going to be kind of similar to the footage that you see, the sample footage of the sample 4K front row camera around the neck. And the image stabilization is not going to be able to effectively counteract all that bumpiness right now. So if you take a look at that video, you'll see what I'm talking about. That's potentially the best type of footage that you're going to get. So if you stand still and, uh, and, and are actively very still about it, you might be able to capture something. However, keep in mind that the neck interface that you have with it is going to hold the camera down below here. So if you're a short guy, um, I am not, I'm, I'm about average. I'm 5'7"-ish, 5'7"-ish. If you take a look at my sample footage down below, you will see that, take a look, it's, it's, it's kind of jumpy. Um, but the footage is, is not bad. Now, the camera that is recording this or the, the higher end video that is being recorded on here, which is, which is basically the backside of the camera, is actually eight megapixels. This is recorded in the 4K mode. Now, no, it's not 16 by nine. 
uh, interface that you get, so you see it's a little bit more of a square thing. And it does not have the digital image stabilization that would have occurred if I had recorded this in 1080p. So your footage might end up being a little bit better with the image stabilization. And of course, you can also run this yourself through Adobe Premiere or some other video stabilization uh, software technology to go ahead and remove that. There's, there's a number of them out there that you can go ahead and try to use. So this is in a somewhat part dark, part light environment. Um, I think in Comic-Con, it's not gonna be as bright like this most of the times because you got the window. So you can see it, it's pretty jumpy. Now, if I go ahead and stand still and I'm using this just to record some footage, yeah, you'll get decent B-roll. Yeah, I could see that. Um, so where this, this really shines is this is a more modern, up-to-date version of the story mode, uh, of, of what they call the story mode, which is to say that um, if, you wanna, you, if you want a journal, if you want a journaling uh, camera, this might be it for you. Okay, so if you want a journaling camera, this might be it. This will give you a, uh, a nice little time lapse of your day. So if you're going out on some sort of uh, special once in a lifetime trip and you don't want to be boggled down with a camera uh, and your pur the purpose of the trip is to enjoy yourself, yeah, this will get you something, at least something. Uh, but most of us like to at least take some pictures. So if you're going to have your smartphone, I suppose you could use that supplementary. The camera on this is as good as a front-facing camera, not the back-facing camera, but the front-facing camera of a Google uh, Pixel phone. So, uh, which is to say that it is only as good as, uh, not as good as the current generation front-facing, but as good as the previous generation front-facing. Uh, camera at 8 megapixels. The front front facing uh, camera is not as good. It's good enough for, uh, I want to say it's about two generations behind. Um, as far as sharing your world in real time, I don't think this is going to be that great for most people. Because you're going to, if, if you're going to be sharing in real time, you're going to be using your phone. And if you're going to be using your phone, why not use your phone to go ahead and share uh, this stuff in real time? I like that the option is available out there. Uh, if you need to put this in a remote environment uh, and you don't want to put your phone up where it could get you know, lost or destroyed, this is roughly half the cost of a high-end smartphone at $400. I can see where you might want to make use of this thing. But I, I can't see myself going to some sort of event or concert. If you take a look at that footage down there below where it shows a sample of someone um, using at a concert, uh, they, they're going to have to be a top person if they're using this clipper mount or they're hand holding it high. If you're going to be hand holding it high, I might as well use my phone to do that, okay, to go live. So, yeah, I, I actually didn't really see much use to use any of the hands free uh, live streaming that, I, that, um, that is featured here. If I wanted to go hands free live streaming, I would probably get something like a POVI or something that will mount my phone somewhere or hang it like a necklace and I've seen seen some products around mostly in Asian countries that allow you to do that uh, in, a, in a better way than having that necklace pendant thing. Another important thing about that necklace pendant and here's what I found after using it uh, I just basically wearing it eight or nine hours walking around Seattle and Portland is that that necklace pendant while you can adjust how high or low it is on, on your, your chest, I found that near the end of the day or as I'm walking around, the weight of the camera itself actually pulls the camera down lower. So it's even lower, thereby exacerbating the up and down movement of the video recording that I get from here. So this, this started up you know, relatively high. So up here, I get less camera movement than I do down here right because it's bouncing against my belly I'm going up and down so this started out really high so this is probably the best that um, that I was going to be able to, uh, able to produce in uh, 4k video recording mode that was the beta version back in the day when I was testing it uh, so that so if you're going to be using that neck necklace pendant um, thing then I would suggest uh, jerry rigging something to hold it um, steady so it doesn't slide and slip so that's down here 
right? The lower it is, the more you're going to be capturing. If you're short, you know, the back side of people, which is probably not the best front side, or at most you're going to you, you, you're going to you're going to capture someone's chest depending on how you know how tall you are. So this might work out well if you're really tall. Not so great if you're short or average, um, you know, like me. Okay. So I wanted to mention that. That's one thing that I learned is that uh, you know you want to get some sort of safety pin or something to, to. I'm, I'm talking about this necklace uh, portion down here that's included. Full day first unique first person time lapse. Yeah, this is the best feature of this is the story mode. Um, it claims it has 16 hours of battery life. I did not get anywhere near that. Um, but the fast charging is actually worked out fantastically. So if I needed to top up while there was not something that interesting, um, I could pause the story mode or continue recording while I still have this plugged in and charging. The problem with the story mode is this. Um, in the Ontographer, what it did was it recorded all the photos directly on the unit and then you can transfer that using an app to put together your story mode. Unfortunately, in this story mode, it did not actually keep the photos separately on the device. So it puts itself together. Um, so you, it's not that easy to go in there and edit it on the smartphone interface. Uh, I, I actually preferred the way that Autographer did it, which was they had a client on the computer that allows me to go ahead and go in there, edit and adjust. Uh, the brightness and sharpness, etc., uh, before producing that final image. In story mode here, even though it captures my experiences and photos over a period of time, it's kind of fixed. I, I can't improve the quality of the photos later. Um, it, it's just it's just a little bit more of a hassle to attempt to try to do. One important detail about this is that if you see down here in their samples, they actually have a watermark on there. If you don't want that watermark, you want to you want to set that up in the settings and turn that off. And yeah, you can turn it off, but then you lose the clock. So if you want to know, you know, roughly what time you did what, um, you know, you got to have that that watermark uh, on there. But yeah, you can you can turn it off, which is which is something that's useful and pretty good. Versatile instant capture. All right. Now, my problem with this was that you press once, you take a photo, but it doesn't take it instantly. It takes it three seconds after the fact. So if I see something happening, if I didn't have the foresight to record it three seconds ago, right when it happens, uh, I might have missed the opportunity. Three seconds is a really long time for this to happen. Um, the firmware was, uh, was what I used back in November, and I don't know if this has been updated. But that's the way it was. So boom, if I see something, oh, quick, take a picture. I click the button. It, it counts one, two, three with haptic feedback. And then it takes the picture. So I wish something like that was configurable through the settings. Again, I don't know if it is right now because I don't have the front row anymore. But I found that part kind of annoying. So it was still faster for me to go ahead and take out my smartphone or the camera that I have slung to the side of my uh, belt and snap that picture. Uh, faster than this thing would have taken a photo, even though this was right by my neck. Now, if I press and hold, it'll start recording a video right away. Unfortunately, here's the thing with that. While it's in story mode, you can't do, you, you can't start recording video. You, you gotta stop your story mode. And if you stop that story mode, it, it's now a whole separate thing, not, so it, it will interrupt your entire day of the story mode in order to, for you to record this video. And then uh, if you want to continue story mode, you start it up again. Then that becomes a, a three separate clips right there. So boom, I start out with story mode during the day. Middle, I want to throw in a little bit of video there. So I started recording a video. Uh, and then I had stopped recording a video, move back and continue with the story mode. Now I have three separate clips. And if I want to combine that all on the same day, it was really not something that I could do uh, using the interface and the software. You know, this is this is all stuff that Front Row could improve uh, upon and and you know make changes. So you know there there is a little bit of hope there, right? So I find that found that a little bit annoying. So I, I couldn't have one whole cohesive day uh, along and throwing in various clips in there and having one final um, you know one one final story or journal of the day. Instead, I have several, which, which then still becomes the same old headache that I have when I'm recording video and photos on my camera. Now, it might sound like I'm complaining. I'm just letting you know this is some area that I would have wished 
was a bit improved and would have been more of a value add than uh, you know just something on a smartphone. All right. So uh, video recording, I already gave you a sample of what the video recording was like. Maybe, on, maybe later on I'll show you an example of the story mode. The story modes that they've shown here in the samples uh, that you see is a pr roughly, <laughs> roughly what it ends up looking like. So if, if you wanted to uh, have like a journal of what you did throughout the day, um, I suppose that's, that's one great way to go ahead and use it. Definitely more useful if you have more interesting things to say or do or see um, out there on vacation. Now, keep in mind, story mode does not record any audio at all. So we'll, we'll get we'll get to that a little bit more later. You know, after the end of story mode, you can go ahead and put in your own. Uh, you can go ahead and put in your own soundtrack on there. They give you some free royalty free soundtracks which really aren't that great but you know they're free and they're royalty free so you can go ahead and put that in with your story mode um, in in place of something completely silent I ended up just producing completely silent stories uh, yeah so those will probably forever remain in a journal somewhere nothing to be shared again like I said um, out of the footage it like I said in my response to the comments here about whether or not this might be good enough for b-row b-roll uh, no unless you specifically change the way that you use the device and use it like a camera and hold it steadily etc 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 um, but if you're just wearing around your neck don't expect too much um, uh, to get some good quality footage for b-roll okay now let's go back and talk a little bit about the optical electrical image stabilization. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's not bad when you're hand holding it around your neck. No, that actually wasn't very useful as you can see in my sample footage. Um, but I was recording 4K. So if you, if you record in the standard 1080p mode, uh, it'll do an okay job. Yeah. So it crops the video, but the same thing, I, I could do the same thing on, on my computer too. Suffice to say, this is not as good as some of the amazing electronic image stabilization that you can see on a lot of uh, drones now, and also the 360 camera. So it's not at that level yet. I think maybe another generation later, uh, it might improve on that because that will probably require a lot of uh, processing power that this, um, is retaining for using for the operating, you know, the modified Android operating system. Capture every moment. Yeah, okay, I could see that. Um, it's, it's useful if you did want to capture every moment. It's also got some other value added items in here. There's a translator app, a Spotify uh, app is on there. I, I really don't mind using Spotify off my phone, so I didn't have any problems, uh, or actually, I actually didn't feel a need to use this. Uh, the stopwatch kind of nice to have on there I gotta admit this is kind of like sized like a sized and looks like a stopwatch so I did use that a handful of times just to time certain things but I could I could have easily used my phone or, or my watch anyway my Apple watch all right so now here's the big problem with the front row it's four hundred dollars now if this was half the price of 200 I'd say yeah uh, this would be great for any trip and you might be able to keep it but if you are going on a, on a, a family vacation, you're going on a special trip, uh, there is no better wearable camera on the market right now that I can recommend. And this is why even though this whole thing sounds like I'm really dogging on the front row camera, this is still the best that is available right now. The best looking, uh, the most solid feeling, the fastest charging, it's, it's a whole lot of, of the best and up to date that you can possibly get on a wearable camera but still at the $400 price point, it was not good enough for me to personally keep. So it's not a full on recommend for everybody. It's kind of a, uh, if you think you'll use it, um, buy it, try it out. And you know, you got 30 days in, in many places uh, to decide whether or not you want to keep it. Um, and if, if you do think that you will be using it on that one special trip, for instance, if I was going to Comic-Con, yeah, I'd probably get it. Uh, it is $400, but if, if you are interested in getting it, please use my link down below the video and also on my front row uh, camera to go ahead and pick it up. 
because I get a little bit of um, commission from it through Amazon. All right, so there are 16 questions on here. Let's take a look at some of the questions. Does the camera have stabilization? And yes, it does. Uh, none of the pictures can be idea size. Are we talking about cameo size? It is smaller than expected. It is roughly about this size. I don't know if you can tell right there. So it's the size of a small little uh, cutie um, mandarin orange. Um, that it's, it's, it's definitely smaller than your fist. Uh, there are actually dimensions and specifications right there on the front row camera uh, website. What other questions we have? Is it compatible with iPhone? Yes, it is. I've used it exclusively with the iPhone. Um, you can use it on Android devices. I don't know if there's any differences. Is the, is the interval between shots and story mode adjustable? If not, what is the interval? Yes, it's adjustable by means of a slider. Uh, three, seconds, three seconds per pick, five seconds, eight seconds, 10 seconds. Oh, so your 16 hours of, of, of estimated battery life is highly dependent on you know what settings you're setting at in terms of the story mode. So if you have it like the rabbit, you're you're probably not going to last a whole day. At least I didn't last a whole day on my front row. So, but I'm talking about a long, full-on day of going about walking around doing sightseeing out in Seattle. So uh, that was, yeah. So, you know, you adjust it a lot less, 10 seconds uh, per pick, eight seconds per pick, and you'll probably be okay. Let's see, is the clip large and sturdy enough to secure a camera on a backpack trap while hiking? Time-lapse uh, picks every 20 seconds. Yes, I think so. I think you can. Uh, is it compatible with Instagram Live? No, not really. Yep, no, can I broadcast? No, it does not. It does not broadcast your own RTMP. This is not a professional class device for that. This is designed for the consumers. Um, and so it would not have a feature like this, nor is that probably, no, nor is that likely on their roadmap. Is it capable of changing music tracks on the phone? Oh, no, uh, except for the Spotify app. So yeah, that's a great question. You know, that'd be something that it could add. You, know, you could use it as a remote control. So, so one cool thing about this is that if you are the type that is really paranoid about the radiation of your phone, um, because, you know, these, these, these little devices emit a lot of radiation depending on, a lot of it depending on a number of factors, how far away you are from a cell tower, cell phone, uh, you know, what radio th signals and everything you have on. You can try to minimize that direct effect of, of those signals by, by keeping this further away from you uh, in a bag, not directly in your pocket or in your hand all the time. So with that the case, if you like to listen to music, um, other than outside of Spotify, it'd be nice if you actually had remote uh, control capability of adjusting the music directly on the pendant, and that would be cool. But no, it actually didn't, and I agree with, uh, with what <coughs> this person said about, about uh, being able to control that. Yeah. Overall, I give it a solid three stars out of five stars. Um, so that would be very similar to uh, the average of what all of this stuff is. But if you don't need to be on a bleeding edge, and if you think this might be cool, but you're not going to be using it on a, a special trip or special events in your life, then I would hold off on version two, just like, just like what... Um, just like what a lot of these other people are also saying. Um, oh, one thing I also want to mention too, and I mentioned this maybe, yeah, I think, yeah, I think I mentioned this in my first initial impressions review. I noticed that a lot of guys notice um, when I'm wearing this. Uh, the girls don't, or at least they, they don't, you know, they don't point it out and ask me, ask me what it is. It's usually the guys that notice something interesting going around um, in your neck. So, uh, one of the benefits of this is that if you are in fact going to be recording something via video and you don't want the person or the subject to be really self-conscious about it, you can more stealthily either one, take a picture, kind of like a street photography type of shot. Again, the problem with that is you got three seconds before it takes a picture. Two, you can record video, which then would also help record audio too. Uh, what I would like to see also on here is an option to just record audio, you know, kind of like an audio memo rather than just record a full-on video. Because sometimes 
you know, you, you maybe just want a snippet of the audio around you. And yeah, that'd be cool to have. And you know, you have all the, all the functionality already built in here. Uh, another thing that would be really cool that is not on here is a headphone jack. I know we're removing all the headphone jacks on here uh, on all the smartphones lately, except for thankfully Samsung and S9. Uh, that would be really cool to have. So, you know, I'm talking about version two stuff that might, might happen or might, might or might not happen. Right. Um, yeah, so around the neck, uh, people do notice it, um, but not everybody, not the general public. This would be people who are more tech-minded, people who are, um, and also a lot of it depends on what you wear too. I tend to wear a lot of dark colors and I'm wearing, and you know, the, the, the one that I got was black. So that just did not really stand out as much as if I were wearing a white one. And sometimes I, I have a lot of other things going on with what I wear. Uh, so this kind of hides itself in there, right? So yeah, and, and it's, sometimes it's light enough uh, or you, throughout your day, you, you wear it enough, you do kind of get used to it on around your neck so you don't notice as much. Sometimes you forget that it's even there or recording anything. And I'll mention this because there's been a number of times where I've actually walked into the bathroom and recorded myself using the bathroom. Uh, that is something that that is uh, not really great, not really cool, and it shows up in my story mode, which is really kind of annoying. So then I'd have to go back in there and remove remove that. So um, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's something else that I, that, uh, I should mention. Okay, this video is, is, is now hitting the 30 minute mark. Um, I've talked so much about this. I'm sure I've answered most of all the questions that anybody would um, wanna ask about the, um, the front row. Oh, here's the other thing. Now, uh, they actually have a general discussion portal and it is relatively active. Let's see. So if you want to find out about new stuff that's going on, um, you could probably find it all here on the, uh, on the website. So they let you know what's going on maybe, or there's any up-to-date stuff. You could probably get some nice tips on there. Uh, I can see now that well, let's see, someone actually broke the glass, so they dropped it. That's too bad. Unfortunately, there is no reply whatsoever. So we really don't know if, uh, if anybody from front row is particularly monitoring what's going on here, which is too bad. Let's see, what do we have here? October, January, first front row story. Okay. There is, oh, here's a perfect example of this family right here, West Tech, who, uh, who went on a family trip and vacation. This is ideally, you know, something that, something that, uh, that people might actually find great usage out of. You get some nice pictures from, from the trip. I suppose, but I suppose you could easily do anything these things with your smartphone. It's really nice of them to share. Yeah. Okay. So, um, another thing with this is uh, that's a little bit concerning is that when when you don't see a whole lot of activity from front row themselves in some of these forums, uh, might mean that they're scaling down operations and perhaps you know front row could be discontinued, which is, which is the sad reality of, of someone you know, trying to introduce the next best thing or something evolutionary, revolutionary, or the, you know, something that might change the way you go ahead and use use what we traditionally thought of as a camera. All right, so that's it. That's it for this video. Please like and subscribe. That would really help me out. And again, I'm recording this live, so uh, I'm leaving everything in here. I hope this was useful to you guys in some way. And um, 
yeah, please subscribe. I definitely need that 1,000 subscribers. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.